uh, and so can Lisa, since we have a small group. How many of you use the student view of Mac and Via and seen and opened a book and you know what the students see? Okay, so only two people. So that's good. So we, um, we're not being too, you know, redundant. We're gonna look at, we'll look at the student view then real quick. And um, let me see, I, I have a couple things up here on my screen to try to have it ready to show you. So we'll look at the student view, but really what I want you to know is you're the unique person at your school that um, we let Mackin give you an administrative account to the back end of your shelf so that you can customize it, so that you can set the loan period to suit your patrons and um, change the displays, uh, customize how your home tab looks, what categories you have. There's a lot of customization, but we don't want you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. So we don't want every teacher in the school rearranging the way it looks, that would be ridiculous. So it's you. Uh, so the way that you get that account is you write Mackin. Uh, at the end of this, I'll give you um, her email. Her name's Kathy Coffey. Uh, or you could go on Mackin.com and uh, create an account and then contact Kathy. Explain that you are the new media specialist at XYZ School in Palm Beach County. And uh, you are the new media specialist and you would like to be made the administrator of the Mac and Via shelf for XYZ school. And be specific about your school name and where you are and that you're part of Palm Beach County School District because Mac and does sell all over the country. And I think even in Canada. So and telling them I'm at Belglade, that's not gonna help them. I'm at Belglade Elementary in Belgrade, Florida, I'm part of the school district of Palm Beach County, you know, to, so that they get it connected to the right shelf. Okay? And I'll, uh, I'll give you Kathy's um, name at the end. And if we run out of time, I'll just email it to everybody. Uh, she's our inside rep at Mackin. She can help you with purchasing. She can get you this account, all kinds of things. And she can connect you to technical support if you ever need it. Um, so let's... Um, let me get, come on, present screen. Where did it go? That's interesting, Lisa. Not there? It won't, you know, I could sometimes fool myself. Just click nope, on the it's picture. Not on, it's not on my other, click on mine. If you click, oh, click on the pictures and then it'll pop up. Usually if I just slide my mouse to the bottom, the bar pops up and it didn't. All right. So I'm going to do present now and I'm going to do... I hope this will work. A window. You're good. And so I'm kind of flying blind now. Do you see Belglade Elementary's Mac and Via shelf, Lisa? I do. Okay, so okay. I picked I picked Belglade L. This is what their homepage looks like. Um, this is the student view. All students, when they click, they have the Mac and Via tile in their portal. They need to sign into the portal, click the tile. Please don't teach them to go to macandvia.com and find their school and all that. I mean, you can sort of go around a back doorway. It is single sign-on. See my forehead? It has a dent in it. It took a long time to get this tool to work, single sign-on, and I bloodied my forehead against IT's wall to do it. <laughs> Log into the portal, click the tile, and it will always authenticate home, school, whatever. The only difference would be is um, there is, and I won't shuffle to it, but there's an app for your phone. Kids can put it on their phone, log into it once, and um, and they can read the books on their phone, download them to their phone and read them offline. Or if they have an iPad, they can do the same thing. So that'd be the only other access point is the free app on their personal device. You can use these on a Chromebook. Just same thing, click the tile in the portal. They can read the book in a tab on, on a Chromebook at home. So that works well too. So this is built home. You can see that it, the books are arranged in rows. You can see the book covers. They call these ribbons. Um, this particular school has um, categories set up that you select. This is part of the customization in the back. 
you set up categories and then you can actually feature a category uh, carousel that's what they call this at the top hers happens to be set on um, adventure and then she has a, a group which is a different thing that is custom made she custom made a group for grades three through five and she chose the books and then it automatically shows bookers in that group you can have a group that's sunshine state young readers you could have a group that's teen reads you could have a group that's Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, folk tales for second grade, whatever, and highlight some books by putting them in a group. And so then you can see that there is a search to just, if I click this, please do it. Okay, these are her two, um, two groups that she has set up. She has readings for grades three through five, and she's chosen some books that apparently read out loud and put them in a group called text to speech. Um, but when you're on the home page, you see what she's chosen to feature. Newest would be the newest, the books that are most recently loaded into this. So when you make a new pur purchase, uh, your titles will show up here. Highest rated just means um, whatever the kids have liked or checked out are in highest rated and top resources. Uh, articles from Dogo News is a free feature of um, Mac and Via. It's a little bit like, mm, like kind of like Scholastic Weekly Reader, sort of. Um, sometimes it's been problematic. You can turn it off if it creates any kind of problems. These are articles um, out on the web. And then she has another featured category for folklore um, and mythology. Yours can be totally different. I can show you another school that will look totally different because they made different choices. So uh, picking a book, trying to find something. Um, well, let's just, I don't really wanna do that. Not the greatest, I, not the super greatest collection, a lot of free stuff, but anyway. Um, I'm gonna pick this one and do open now. This is what the kid sees. It does take a minute, a long minute. Is it scrolling to that window, Lisa, or, or it did is. it? Okay. It's pinwheeling. And of course it's pinwheeling. So the book is gonna open in a reader. You can highlight some books read out loud, not all books. That's a vendor, a vendor, not a vendor. Take that word back. Publisher, controlled thing. They either publish it so it reads aloud or they don't. It, it's not, it's not Mackin that makes that happen. It's the publisher. You're good to go now. Wow, Alex. this is slow. <laughs> huh. You know, might have been the book I picked. Wonderful. It's been Audio. slow for me for two days, Holly. What? It's been slow for two days. It would yeah. bump me out and it's probably because we're using it so heavily. There, it finally loaded. Sort of. All right, so you can see that this one happens to read out loud, which is probably what, another reason it loaded slow. Um, this is your page view and up oh, and scrolling apparently takes a little bit of time and then you can page forward with the arrows. Uh, they work a little bit differently when they're downloaded and you can bookmark pages with this symbol here and you can Close, um, close the book here. I'm gonna close that one because that was so slow. It could, it just could be we're taxing it. I, that's all I can think of. This is not um, hosted on um, district servers. It is hosted on the Mac and Bia server. So I don't know if it's just them having a lot of stress because everybody in the country is using them, or or what it is, or if it's just our network. But. Um, but basically that's the platform. Every kid has a backpack. They can highlight and take notes in a book. They end up in their um, notebook inside their backpack, even after they've closed or returned the book or moved on to another grade, those notes will follow them in their backpack as long as they're part of the school district system and have their single sign on. Uh, and they can dump them when they, when they uh, want to. So, 
this menu will show, um, well, let's do this first. Let me do one that doesn't look like a multi-user. Wish I picked a different school now. Here's Diary of Olympic Kid. That's probably not multi-user. User. So, uh, hey, Holly, is there a movie or some clip that we can post on a site or in our class for the kids to know how to do the backpack? that's already made. Mm, did we do a backpack one, Lisa? I know I we have one about the resource in general. Um, we can make one. Not oh, to be a father, but I'm going, that would be handy. Well, and two, as part of your um, wheel instruction, you can do that live if you right. can get it to do this. Um, now, how do I get a student view, though? Every re the reader view is the reader view. So oh, when you, oh it, so I when get you, that too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. When you click that, that, that you, okay, you have a backpack, and and you can open books, you can take notes, you can check out a book, check in a book, uh, just like the kids. I, That's what uh, I I've really thinking. gotten. Okay. It. You know what? Let me see if I close. Let me close this tab. I'm not going to try to open another book only because we only have thirty minutes, but um. But that was a good question, Michelle. Your first entry point, when you click the tile, you're in as a reader. So you can see it says, welcome Holly Ann here. And I have a backpack with, I can you know see the books I've marked favorite. It, favorite. it here, this would be the books I checked out, which means the books I can read online. You go on the computer, choose a book, check it out, which I was gonna show you, except it's gonna take forever for it to open. And then you go on your app, on your personal device, open your backpack, click checkouts, and there's your books that you've checked out. And you click it again and you download it to your device. Okay. That's You can play with that. Um, um, I need to back up. When I click on the Mac and Tile right now, it says log in. It doesn't just go. Are you in the portal? Yes. I just clicked it to see if what view I had, because I'm confused with this new title. Are you sure it they says, didn't kick you out of the portal in the background? I Are you know. positive? Nope. It just asked me to log back into the portal. Let's see what happens. I went to the portal, clicked Mac and Via, but I see like I need to put my, oh, now I bounce back. Okay, never mind. It, it, it was some kind of glitch. Maybe that's why mine was pinwheeling when I tried to open oh, the book. Yeah. Because now I went right to it. I just thought something uh, happened. Yeah, you should. Last time I used it, it didn't do this. Okay. Yep. So okay. so you would pick a book. And like I said, I, you'd open the book. There's a button to check it out. And then you would go to your app. And once you've logged into the app once, it saves it. So you just press the app. They would do their checkouts. And they could pick it there and download it to their device. The app is available in the App Store for your device, uh, Google Chrome, the Google Store the or the um, Apple Store. Um, it works on Android devices as well. Um, but the kids but need to do that as well? That's a step they have to do? They don't have to. Remember, some of them, the only device they have to use is the Chromebook the district has given them. Oh, These right, work right, great right. on the Chromebook. As long as they have the book open, nobody else can open the book. Okay. okay, I use it for battle with the books with Chromebooks in my room. That's about as far as I've gone with this. Okay. Okay. So um, for some, you know, a, a personal device is, is not going to be an option. Older kids, uh, and you know, if you right. know the kids have a phone or an iPad, um, you could they could use that feature. They don't download to the Chromebook. They open in a tab and they're reading them online, but it works. Okay. So, so Michelle asked the question, you know, when I click it, do I, how do I see the student view? Well, the, the student view is what you see. It's the everybody view. It's the reader view. But for you as the administrator, once you get it set up, it's not going to work automatically. This is, this is the part that's not single sign on. Okay. Okay. You see the menu that I have open from the backpack. Uh -huh. You see right here, administrator. Mm -hmm. Once Mackin has set you up as the administrator, you will have a password that has nothing to do 
with your district password, okay? Don't, you'll be asked to make one. Do not duplicate your single sign-on password. You know, make it something else. It will be a sign-on to, to their website, mackin.com, not mackinvia.com, mackin.com. That's their, um, their business website. Once you've made that and they have done the mojo to connect you, you would click right here on administrator and it would give you a sign in. You would put in that magic password, which is going to be your school district email and a password that you make up on the Mac site. Okay. Okay. Follow me so far. Yep. It's not going to automatically click through the tile automatically clicks you to the reader view. Okay. You're the administrator. You click that button. It's going to give you a login screen and you're okay. going to do the login that you either made up when you talked to Kathy coffee or you did uh, when you created the account on Mac.com, but you got to get it connected first. Yes. Got to get, and then Kathy that will work. I finished. Okay. Yes. Now here's the thing. I can't demonstrate that for you unless I was in the professional library, which I'm the administrator of. Okay. I'm the librarian for that library, but I'm also the administrator. And so is Lisa of every single via shelf in the district. Mm -hmm. So we can't use this button to get to the back end of Bell Glade Elementary or anybody. But okay. that's where you do it. OK, so I can't demo it, but that's where you do it. Okay. I have to do is I have to go to my account, Mac.com, and I back my way into the school I want to look at. So I've done that already. Did it switch windows, Lisa? Yep, okay. you're good. I've logged in to Mackin.com. I've gone, this is Mackin.com, okay? This is their business site. This is where you order. This is where you look at your account. This is where you create an account. This is where you go to the, you can go to the back end of Mac and Via uh, and um, do other things. So uh, this is how I have to go because I have 167 shelves attached to my login. So I go to my account and I go down to Mac and Via, gives me this window and I pick the, the back end I wanna see from here. Okay. So I'm just gonna leave it on Acreage Pines. I could pick anybody's school and um, from here and um and look at the back end okay but this is what the back end looks like all right everybody with me so far i can see the faces i just want to make sure everybody's with me because we're i didn't realize that this would take more than 30 minutes sorry um so some things you need to just leave in place this guest login leave it there Please ignore it. Please do not give it to anyone. Okay, we. Do, I don't even know if it'll work, but it needs to stay in those. Those boxes cannot be blank. We do not use that. Please do not give that away to your friends in Minnesota. All right, we're paying licenses for our public school students to use these licenses. It would be a license violation if you share it with your nieces and nephews in California and give them that guest login you could get us in a lawsuit. So, but leave that alone. Leave it exactly like it's formulated and just ignore it. It's single sign on. They just click the tile. If that ever breaks, put in an e-support ticket, which they'll contact us, but you really should just contact us directly and we'll look into why it's not working, okay? So leave all that alone. Leave all this alone. Don't customize it, all right? But here is where you have all the options to customize how the interface looks. I can pick which um, page I start on. I can have it start so it only starts with eBooks. I can have it start with um, the databases that we've imported into here. Um, this one is set as the home tab. That's what you saw on um, the Bell Glade page. It started on home, which has everything. I can decide how many books to show on a page, up to 50. I can decide what view they get, tile view or list view. I can also deactivate the home page so that it goes directly to uh, just the groups or just the eBooks. And you can also change the color theme 
See how the colors changed here? This would change the color theme on your page. You could choose something that goes with your school logo because there's another spot where you can import your school's logo and it'll be up in the upper corner with the Mac and logo. I'm gonna make this go back to the default because I don't wanna inadvertently edit this page. And then you change, um, you um, click save changes if you've changed anything. I'm just gonna do this just so it doesn't get messed up. So these are the resource types that are shown. If you wanna turn them off, you turn them off from here and you click save changes. This is important to look at. There's a couple choices here. Every VIA shelf has a dictionary integrated in it. Uh, if you're secondary, you'll want to change. The default is the elementary dictionary. You want to go in here and pick um, the intermediate or high school dictionary if you're, but don't set it on the high school dictionary if you're elementary. It's kind of like giving them the unabridged because what Mackin does is um, the books, when you highlight a, a word, you can click it, it'll give you the definition. Oh. So, but you wanna be sure you've got the right, um, particularly for the older kids, you wanna make sure those that are, it can get to a dictionary that helps define those larger vocabulary words. So, and then the last thing on this page, this is where you can upload a file that is your logo. Maybe you can make a library logo or you, or you import a picture of your school. You do have to mess with it and get the file size right and, and get the um, aspect ratio correct. You gotta futz with it a little bit because some of them can look kind of screwy. They can, they can you know stretch them or whatever, but um, you can upload a, a, a file here and um, customize your page. Let's see, where do I wanna go? Cause we're not gonna be able to do all of them. Do you know if we're gonna get the eBooks for the Battle of the Books? You said it was frozen and you were working on a waiver. We're this and close, we're, we're this close. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting for um, the quotes to come back from Mackin, the refined quotes. I have a verbal from our leadership that, that oh, she yeah. will okay it, but I haven't done the waiver yet cause I don't have the quotes with it exact down to the penny amount okay. and you have to put the exact pin down to the penny amount what you want to spend on the waiver oh, so I got you. it's close it's close good well that's good news thanks so um so we were on general you can look at your checkouts here this is important to look at because you can customize this this is very important to consider um, if it's younger children, you know, maybe 14 days is fine. Or maybe if it's uh, high school, they're novels. They're, most of the stuff in Mac and Bia, we, on purpose, it's fiction for pleasure reading and to support Battle of the Books. Maybe they need more than 14 days to read a high school novel. Um, you would want to increase this loan period. But in tandem with that, you need to think about how many resources to let them have at a time. Now, I am all for kids walking out of the library with a wheelbarrow full of print books. Mm -hmm. But the thing to think about with Mac and Via is even though this is almost a half a million dollar investment title by title over five years, the collection is very small. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's an ebook. How many ebooks are they going to focus on at one time? One. So, my yeah. tendency would be to have a lower limit on the ebooks because they automatically return. So, there's really no point. We, we ran across one school, they had 20 as the limit. What kid is going to go through 20 books in 14 days? And they can't even remember that they have them because they're in the ether. You know, it's not like they have a stack or they, you know, it's a 20 pound weight in their backpack. They don't remember. And it's going to go away automatically. So think about that with your kids. Maybe you want to do a lower limit, maybe two 
think about, you know, how you can share them best. Maybe give them a longer period of time to get it read for the older kids with novels or, um, but think about that, but don't set it on 20 and 30. Uh, this um, is not very customizable by patron type. It's not customizable in that way at all. So whatever you set here is for the whole school, the adults and the kids, every grade level. So you kind of have to balance that yeah. too. It's just the way it works. Uh, it'd be nice if you could tell kindergartners they could, you know, have, you know, 10 picture books because they're going to run through them in high school, whatever, but you can't. Um, so it has to be the same for everybody. You can decide how many times they're renewed. Um, so think about that in terms of sharing. I don't know if they need to really, if your loan period is short, then you need more renewal. Or maybe you have a longer loan period, but you don't, you only renew it once. Think about what will help share the material and then teach the kids that because there's nothing, the little guy doesn't pop up on the screen and go, you've only got 14 days. You know, don't forget to read your book. Um, you know, you'll have to teach them, let them know when you do this, it's going to last this long and then it's going to be gone. You know, and just get them to meet with your, your program. This is um, holds just like for print books. They can put a hold on a on an ebook, and that means when it pops off of somebody's screen, it will it will pop to them. It will get offered to them. So you can decide how long you know they they get to wait for a hold by by hours. Um, let's see, and you have to enable stuff to use it, as you can see. But that's that's already been done. So that's something to look at. Um, your, your checkouts and requests. I'm just gonna click save just to make sure nothing gets messed up. This is where you activate categories, if it'll go slowly. It's pinwheeling, there it goes. All right, so um, at this school, they're disabled, but um, at uh, Bellglade, they activated the categories so that kids could it's kind of like topics. It's so they can start, I want animal books. I just click this and I get animal books. You know, I want geography books. I just click that and so on. You can, you activate that here. I should have picked a school I felt like I could mess with. I don't really want to mess with a school that has an active librarian um, and mess up what they're doing. But um, you have to enable it and then you pick primary or secondary and that just controls uh, how mature the pictures, the icons look. So for elementary, stick with primary. It doesn't give you more books or anything. It takes those icons and connects it to the books in your catalog. So how many ever animal books you have gets connected to the little animal icon. And then you um, can save changes and you can take out some of them. I don't have any animal books. I'm just not going to have that category. You can take them out. But that gives you that visual search for the kids. Um, until you activate all this, you don't have this choice on the left and you don't have these things. Okay. This is where you customize your home page. This is where you decide which ribbon is at the top and how many that it shows in the ribbon. You can move these around. See, I can. I'm gonna put it back, but um, and you could like put you could put Dogo News at the top if you wanted. Um, but this is where you rearrange your ribbons. Uh, they're called carousels, and you can add a group carousel by doing this. Now, see how this are that's probably saved because I've done SSYRA carousels at school. But if you added this, then you can go to another location. You can add the books to the carousel and they'll come up on your homepage and you could push that carousel to the top. And um, I guess I could take this off. So there's the carousel and then you go over here, I think. E books. Maybe not, maybe not. I've forgotten where to add. Hmm. 
I've forgotten where you go to add the eBooks to the carousel, Lisa. I haven't done it in a while. Oh, I haven't either. Um, I, it's not in resources. Well, it's not add new resource. Try eBooks. I did. May, wait, maybe I just didn't look. Add resource, um, activate, sort by. I know there's a place you can just click title by title and stick them on that carousel. All right, I should have reminded myself before we started. It's huh. um, classroom and then groups. Of course it's classroom, because that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Because it's not a library after all. Um, and the, oh, look. <laughs> Nolan did this training last, and he made this group. So I probably, um, and it's active. So you do manage resources, and then you can pick um, titles. I'm going to delete this. So I'm just going to add a title to show you, and then I'm going to delete it because Poor Acreage Pines did not ask for me to customize their page. Um, but you could actually search up here. Anybody give me a SSYRA 3.5 title off the top of their head for this year? We don't have them yet. Oh, that's right. Uh, there. Well, some schools do. That's true. Uh, all right. All four. All, absolutely almost was one in the past. Okay. Let's just pick that one. And let's pick all four stars was one in the past. All right. So there's two books, two books. And nope, that's not it. I'm not sure it's going to the right group, to the right carousel. No, it is. I think it is. Just if you click on absolutely almost and add it and then click on the all four stars and then add it. And if you go back to the groups, let me see. Or, yeah, there you go. Groups. There's nope. 10 now. Hmm. All right, but it's not active because it did not show. Let's go back to, I'm going to go to student via. This is how you view what you've done to yourself. It didn't add them. See, feature group. Hmm. All right, I'll have to reteach myself that. I thought I knew how to do that. Wait just a minute here. Maybe you have to go to homepage. Oh, nope, that didn't do it. Well, it is active. I'm gonna put it at the top. Let's see what happens when I go. Yeah, I have to close that. Go to student via. Oh, you know what? <laughs> that slowness of opening the books and everything is making this happen slow also. Sometimes the things that you change, the big things, that's why we're not seeing them. In a few, in an hour or two, those changes will be there. Oh. I forgot that, that part, even in, in good times. It does take a little bit because it's going to the Mackin server and then, you know, whirling around and coming back. That's what's going on. Um, I'd forgotten about how slow it is, but I'm going to go in and take this out just because this isn't my library and I don't want her to have any surprises tomorrow. So we'll take that out, but give it a try. Add a, add a carousel, add some books to it and then click it and then wait a couple hours for it to cycle and it, it'll be there. It'll be there. Uh, let's see. So These are just different types of resources that you can add. You can actually add links to resources in here. 
Uh, I have a library. Let me uh, let me change libraries and show you Carver Middle School because I think there's some links here. So what I did was um, I'm still on resources. I switched schools. I'm at Carver Middle. Um, I added links from the Library of Congress and an article directly from our Gale resources and um, put them in under resources on the page. So let me slide over here and go to the student view. And go to links. And the links are there with a nice, um, usually a nice picture. This is an article from Gail Singage, and this is a link to Library of Congress. So you can curate information onto this page to go with the books that you have. So then, because I put these two links, I created a group, African American History, hardly comprehensive, but it was a demo. Uh, and I put, I chose eBooks from the collection, and then I chose also links that I had made, and I put okay. them in this group. So you could do that around any kind of curriculum unit or promotion or whatever. Um, but you have to add the resource first, and then um, then make the group and add the link and the ebook and so on, all the materials to the group. Here's an example of what the logo looks like when you load it. I put this logo in here for Carver, and I also renamed their library, Cloud Library. And it says African American History because that's the group I'm on. But when I'm on the Home tab, it says Cloud Library Home. So you can, you know, you could give it, you know, virtual library, whatever, uh, if you wanted to. Okay, so that's what that looks like in the front end. Let's see. We have, let me see what it looks like in the back end. All this work here, all these um, databases, these are links to databases that we pay for. Um, pl please don't delete them. We paid, a, we paid for the service to have them imported. Uh, you can use them or not use them. They will come up in a search. This reminds me I need to talk to them and see about, Lisa, we should put this on a list. See how this says kids info bits? That's probably broken. Right. I don't know what it goes to. I'll have to see what happens because it's changed. The logo has changed and the, the link's probably changed. But um, Mackin worked with us to import our uh, databases into the resource so that when you're on a student view, If they wanted to, they could jump right to uh, Gale Resources from here. And also, when you're on the home page, let's see what happens if I do a search for Rosa Parks. You get the links I built in. You get eBooks. Nope, it didn't search. Hmm. It should have searched the Gale databases for that. Maybe I have to be on databases. Ooh. That's broken. Okay, that's, fix that. that's broken. That's broken. It's supposed to search the databases. Yeah. I'll have to talk to uh, Mackin about that. Whoops. Of course, when you're going to demo something, that's like Murphy's Law. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what if we can. I want to see if we can open it too. See now, I can open the resource and then search it. Hmm. It just doesn't search from the top because it should search from here. I'll have to talk to them why that's not working. Um. All right. So the back end again. Before we run, well, two things. This is where you get your circulation reports for Mac and via eBooks. They don't come up in your regular Destiny circulation reports. Uh, it's just not connected that way. Um, so you have to go to usage and set up the parameters that you want, like which dates, like 
can be any you know span of time and um, do view report and it will tell you what circulated and how many books in the, but it's, and then again, it's only talking about your Mac and via eBooks. So that's sometimes good in order to uh, find out the activity and if it's being used at your school and, and what to promote. And speaking of promotions, promotions is where you go to um, select things that are free and they will add them to your Mac and via collection. However, remember that, you know, it's the old adage, you get what you pay for. So um, choose carefully, make sure it's something that is, creates uh, value for you and your students. Um, and not just, oh, well, they're all here, so I'm going to select them all because I want as much stuff as I can get a hold of. Um, we all did the class, not all, but classics were available. That's why they're calling it the distance learning package. Um, we did this um, in the spring when we sh had the shutdown. A lot of schools chose to load the classics. And you know, cl the word classics, that used to be like a benign term, like, oh, classics are all cool. Mm -hmm. But as we have progressed as a society and our culture has changed, there are some classics that are very much problematic, except for the study of literature by adults or people studying the culture in a certain time or having context for that title, they're not necessarily completely benign for children. You know, we think of a classic as, oh, well, that won't be uh, controversial. It won't have any controversial topics or words in it. It's a classic, little kids are fine with it. But that is not necessarily the case. And so if you do choose to download the classics, do look at them closely. You know, even some that are Beloved of people my age, um, there are words and phrases that were appropriate when they were written in 1864 mm -hmm. <laughs> that are no longer appropriate. Um, and even if you read it as a child, you might not remember because it didn't jump out at you. Um, so do take that into account when you do look at the classics. And, um, you know, how many kids have run in the library and said, can I please have a really boring book from like 200 years from when I was before I was born with language I can't even read or understand because it's like Victorian and whatever. Um, and it, the plot moves real slow. Have you got any of those? Said no kid ever. You know, they want to read current fiction. They read classics when they're assigned. OK, so think about that, uh, particularly with the classics. But you're welcome to select these products. Some of these. Um, uh, are only good for a certain period of time. You can see this one is only um, available through September 30th, and then the, the material will go away. So, but it, I did want you to know what promote what the promotions button did. And we pretty much went through all the categories. This is just what it's set up to integrate with, and it does integrate with uh, Google Classroom. So you can link these books and things out to your Google Classroom. Um, and this is where it just shows what's been integrated with this, this school. So I ran over, it's 318. There's another group in another room we've got to click to by 330. Um, I'm sorry that we were so long, I was, I was so long winded. Uh, and uh, we'll look into why the databases aren't working correctly in here. And um, uh, do try making a group and adding things to it and then just wait a few hours or the next day and it'll be there. Anything you move around, it, it will work. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pop a link to, um, we have three Mac and Via tutorials that we recorded and they're on YouTube. I'm gonna pop a link to that in the chat right good. now. And yes, Keisha, I'm looking at your question. Yes, the teachers have the option to link these resources to their Google Classroom. However, if there's one copy of Wimpy Kid and they have linked it to their classroom and somebody checks it out, the kids won't have access to that resource. But you can, if they put a group of links in a, um, if you create a, um, a group of links for them and you put, you could put that right in a Google Classroom it would be a great way to curate information for them and then draw attention, of course, to our Mac and Via collection. 
And remember the way the eBooks work, um, for example, those classics that are in that promotion, there's one sitting right there, Tom Sawyer. Um, this version is the class, the free classic. This is, I think a paid one, but um, the books are all different license formats. Some of them are simultaneous multi-user and some of them are one kid at a time. The ones we buy for Sunshine State and the FTR, they're one single user licenses. That's the way the market works. You're not gonna find every title you want in simultaneous multi-user that you keep forever. Mm. There, every book is not alike when it comes to eBooks. Some of them are one user at a time, just like a print book. When you buy one copy of um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, it's one copy. How many kids, can the entire school open that book at the same time? No, it's one copy. One copy of an ebook is very often that same format. They're not all websites, they're, they're a book in an electronic container. Um, so you have to know which one, what you're buying when you, when you make a selection, um, know what you're getting for your price and, um, and know that they're you know, only one user at a time sometimes. And that's just the way you, you get them. Um, and uh, anybody at Mackin can help you with that. Where's my, here's my website, here's my buying site. This is what it looks like when you create lists. Um, here's a list I made of SEL titles to purchase. Okay, and you can see right here, these are all eBooks. Can you read that on the screen? I don't know. Two year subscription, single user ebook. That means I pay, where's my price? Uh, 1449. 1449. That means I get it from for two years from the purchase date, the date of the purchase order. And there's a little lag before you get the books. Very short, but there's a little lag. Um, two years and then they turn it off. And it is single user. For two years, one kid at a time can open that title. That's what I'm paying for. But it's only 14 bucks. Um, sometimes they are, well, I don't think there's any multi-user on this. Uh, but here, okay, so here's a different example. See this? Single user ebook. That means it's one user at a time, but because it doesn't have anything about subscription in right, written right there, that is a book that we get to keep forever, unless somebody makes an electronic mistake and turns it off, okay? That one you're gonna keep in perpetuity. But if it says subscription, it's gonna go away. And some of them are two, some of them are, here's one that's one, beautiful book, one year. Okay? And sometimes Older they are, I was gonna say sometimes they're like 24 or 36 checkouts and then they go away. Yeah, mm. yep. That's another model, that's true. Um, the publishers are figuring this out. If there's less and less single user ebook, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And it's usually the older titles. I mean, that's why those classics are free. Nobody wants to buy them. You know, they're giving those away. The, old, the older titles, some nonfiction titles, but um, the very popular, what we call frontline fiction, is some sort of subscription model, usually. It's very hard to keep a collection built this way. But we need to be in this um, realm, and it, thank God for it during distance learning. And, you know, it's something to think about emphasizing this year with your spending. This platform is set up to already function. Um, don't spend your time going out trying to find another vendor with another platform with another something. You'll have to run it through TCC. You'll have to make it work. You'll have to, it's a lot of work to make it single sign on, to get that tile in the portal. That doesn't happen by magic. That happens by hard work and elbow grease and a lot of forms and a lot of meetings. And, you know, it, it doesn't just, the vendor doesn't set that up for you. So you can get any ebook title that you could probably want that's in existence from either Mackin or Follett, and they will open in the readers uh, that match uh, that vendor. And the Follett ebooks will be delivered straight to your catalog. You click uh, the record for the book and click open, 
and there they'll be. The Mac and Via books shipped, loaded directly to your Mac and Via shop. No pain to you. So I strongly can urge you to use the the ebook platforms that we have already engaged in and set up. So that would be Mac and Via, uh, buy them from Follett. They will be in the Follett shelf and Follett has a new reader, not making any promises about their new reading platform. It works outside the network. I put it on my phone, it does work. What it's gonna do inside the building, don't know. Um, okay. But they do have a reader. Um, and then we can buy nonfiction. Well, there's some fiction as well. We have eBooks through the Gale Cengage Learning Corporation. They are on our Gale resources portal under the eBook tab. And um, those are multi-user eBooks. You can buy a lot of nonfiction titles from Gale. So I encourage you to think about eBooks for your kids for this year, invest. Even when the kids are uh, back at the building, how many library books do we really wanna pass back and forth? You know, uh, I still think there's an opportunity for them to have some print books, but the eBooks are still gonna be useful. What about the kids that are gonna stay at home and not come back in the building? Their parents don't wanna drive up to the school and have somebody hand them a book. The eBook collection is gonna be important. So, and you can get good titles. And like I said, we're, we're pretty proud of the way the Mac and Via reader works. And um, from, the on, from the first glance, it looks like the new Follett reader, which is called Destiny Discover, uh, their app seems to work just fine. Uh, so we have some hope for that. And both of them, the books open beautifully in a browser. So they work beautifully on a Chromebook. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we've got to jump to the next room. Hey, um, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I'm sorry it took so long, but I guess, you know, it just takes a while to go over things. You guys were so patient to stay. Thank so, you. Oh, thank you. Kathy Coffey's um, oh, contact yeah. information. You can go to librarycurrent.palmbeachschools.org and go to the Open Me First package and the bid awarded vendors are there. And there. she's in there. Yeah, the, our website. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. All right. And I'll try Take to remember care. to email it out too. Okay. okay. All, all right. right. See, you Bye. See you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. I guess we better jump on the other one, Lisa. All right.